roll right into our post qualifying for tomorrow night's NASCAR Sprint All Star race. Starting up on the front row will be uh, Kurt Busch. He drives a number 78 Furniture Row Sealy Chevrolet. And uh, Kurt, uh, the All Star race, certainly uh, uh, a big event. Uh, for NASCAR Sprint Cup Series drivers here tomorrow night. You had a fast car last week at Darlington. You've been running well this year. Uh, what do you think about tomorrow night? Uh, you think you can get to victory lane? Well, I think we're definitely in a good position. Our, our team you know, continues to define speed each and every week. And to unload uh, today and to have um, you know, a good practice session and then to execute uh, coming onto pit road uh, at 157 miles an hour, it's pretty wild. You know, it's like a step back in time when you get a chance to you know, throw caution to the wind and let a rip coming on pit road. So it was fun. Thanks to Mike Helton, Darby, and Pemberton for coming up with that rules change. And, you know, when I first heard about it, I was really excited and um, gave it my best effort. And uh, we, we were right there. Um, the pit crew uh, had a nice steady stop. It just wasn't the fastest stop. And so we find ourselves outside pole. But we find ourselves in a great position for um, being up front and uh, to try to win that first segment and then to see how it goes from there. Uh, we we want to be up front early in the race. It'll, it'll now uh, direct us in a different pattern probably for our pitch strategy for the four segments. Uh, we just need a good average finishes uh, with, with, the, um, with the way they're going to do the lineup on the final segment. And so... You, to be in the top five all night, that's, that's where we hope to be. And um, you know, the, the guys on the team you know, just need a nice steady night, no, no big drama, and just have a nice smooth night, and I think we'll be in the mix. Good deal, Kurt. Questions for Kurt Bush? Mike on the front row. MikeEmbrySpeed.com. Kurt, how did you gauge how fast you could go coming on the pit road? Did you have enough practice to do that, or did you, were you looking for a mark? How did you figure that? I just found a mark, used it as a braking marker like you would um, at a road course. And so the, the only thing that's a little different is the tires only have a, a lap and a half of heat and the brakes have uh, no heat at all. So in practice, the tires had more heat and the brakes had more heat, so the car was going to be more consistent in practice. So I just came in a little conservative. I didn't want to overshoot the pit box, but uh, I think our mile per hour was 157 and there was only one guy that was quicker than us getting into the pit box with that trap speed but trap speed is one thing and that's what I learned in drag racing versus the whole elapsed time and that is the deceleration rate getting into the pit box so it's just a, a point that I picked uh, I practiced it twice and then uh, executed on the third time other questions for Kurt uh, right here Al yeah Kurt Al Pearson Water Week uh, assuming that Carl Edward was joking, this is not a good system for a regular race, is it? I don't know what Carl Edwards well, he, said. Well, he said, hey, we should do this every weekend. That's, that's probably not a good idea, right? Yeah, that's one of the men, you know, remarks I made earlier, throwing caution to the wind. And it's because we have a controlled environment with only one car on pit road at a time. And the crew guys had to wait until the car came to a complete stop. Yeah, we can't have cars doing 157 miles an hour on the entry to pit road. Imagine being in that 43rd box and having cars zizz by you that fast. So, you know, it's just a fun treat to, to do this uh, all-star weekend. It's just the whole atmosphere. And, you know, tonight is uh, Military Appreciation Night at Furniture Row, so I'm headed from here to the store that's uh, just a couple miles away to shake hand with our military guys and, uh, you know, have a soda pop with them and, you know, we're running the banner that's on the car supporting our military, and so we hope we're able to you know, deliver for those guys and support our troops. It's always fun to kick it off this weekend with Armed Forces Day on Saturday and then uh, with a big week next week with Memorial Day. Just got to thank Barney Visser and, and this whole team. We're, we're definitely uh, finding some speed, and we're showing some results. It's been a good feeling. Any additional questions for Kurt? Right over here, Hill. Yeah, Kurt Hill Overton, WIXC Radio. Uh, after this deuces is wild or going for it so fast down pit road here tonight, will there be a problem readjusting when you got to go back to the old speed limit? You, you think that, that this will cause that to, uh, a lot of people to speed maybe in the next race? Well, it's just the uh, the green flag stops that um, that it'll cross your mind when that happens. But for the all star race, 
Uh, there's a, a caution every 20 laps. I think we'll have uh, everybody under control. But it was just fun to do it. Just fun to do something different and, you know, give a, a moment of, of throwback when, um, when speeds were above 150 coming on pit road. It's pretty wild. So Edwards, those guys, they executed well. And uh, their pit stop, I think, was 1.2 seconds quicker than ours. And they beat us by 1.1. So it, it was definitely fun challenging the other drivers to go fast on the pit road. David Newton. Yeah, David Newton, ESPN.com. Kurt, I understand you got your opportunity in uh, Vegas and Late Models because of a tragedy in the uh, Trickle family, and, and you actually raced against Dick. Can you just talk about what that and, and your thoughts on him and his passing? You know, when, when I was growing up running in Vegas, uh, we, the Trickle family was, was the racing family in the city. Uh, they were known. Uh, it was Chuck Trickle was the dad. Chris Trickle was the son. Uh, they were known as as the big name, and we always looked up to those guys on how they raced and uh, how their um, demeanor was, you know, outside of the car and in, inside the car. And then, yeah, I did get a chance to race against Dick Trickle once uh, at Slinger Speedway up in Wisconsin. Uh, you know, he's there in a driver's meeting. It's 3.30 in the afternoon, and he's got a, a cigarette in one hand, and he's got his coffee in the other hand, and we, we hung out and shared some stories. And it just all the, the, the stories you heard about Dick, it, uh, it, made, you, it made you think that, uh, wow, one person has done all of this. Uh, he's, he's lived an extraordinary life, and it was always uh, fun when he was at the track, and when you were there racing against him, you knew he was always going to have a smile on his face. And uh, Jeff Gordon always told the story on when you knew you were going back to green when the cigarette butt came flying out the window <laughs> and hitting the track. And so there's, there's a lot of good uh, Dick Trickle stories out there. And, you know, the boys on ESPN always uh, showing his highlights, even though he was running 38th. Uh, it was just to, you know, get a chuckle about his name. But he was a, a true American hero on the short tracks. You don't win a 1,000 races uh, by accident. Uh, a guy that comes up in my mind current day now that really takes over for short track America with, with a name and a history like that is Steve Kinzer. And so it... Um, and we're all going to miss Dick, uh, Chuck Trickle. I haven't. I need to find him. I need to reach out to him. And uh, I got my opportunity in late models when Chris Trickle was tragically shot uh, in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. I was actually away at college in Tucson, Arizona, and the phone rang. They said that Chris had been in an accident, and that was uh, of utmost concern. Of course, was coming back uh, to, to see him in the hospital and to, to hold his hand and to try to help him through it, but he never was able to pull through. Uh, spent over 13 months in a coma uh, from the injury, and, you know, th that opened up the door for me to be able to um, jump in that car and take the Star Nursery Special to a, a championship in the Southwest Tour. So it's tough to lose another trickle. That's, uh, that's to say the least.